Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to the Vine Order YouTube channel. I know it's been a little minute, y'all. It's literally been like almost a month and a half at this point. And I just want to say we have both been going through so many transitions. So thank you for your patience with us. We are going to be coming with, to you with a lot of updates. Um, and we'll just link those in the description box below. We're not going to spend too much time talking about it. We'll get to that at the end. Uh, for those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Brooklyn, and we got Mark Clee here, aka Clee, <laughs> aka Clee Bob, however you want to give it to him. <laughs> and, hey guys, how's it going? Yes, top of the week, it's Monday, it's Monday, right? Yeah, it's Monday, it's Monday. <laughs> And today's topic is basically going to be about self-love, right? So Mark Lee said that he's been seeing that basically everywhere, like on his social media and stuff like that. So if you don't mind sharing just some of the things that you have been seeing pertaining to self-love or just love in general. All right. So what I've been seeing when it comes to self-love Posts and things like that have been like, um, I say just a lot of healing, a lot of people just basically doing things for themselves that makes them productive, uh, whether it be like, you know, things that are like personal for them that they're doing, um, things that are fun, spending time with family. Um, I see... Um, on the women's side, a lot of um, kind of makeup type of things, like, you know, you're cleansing your face and making sure your skin is clear and you're making sure that you're getting your hair done, done, done stuff like that. Um, I've also seen a lot of meditation, a lot of meditation, yoga. Yoga seems to be real big. I used to clear the mind. Um, yeah, and Bible study. I've seen a lot yeah, of that Bible yeah. study. I definitely was uh, doing my Bible study this morning. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so self-love to me and all of those things literally tie into personally some of my uh, self-love routines. Like I take every Saturday and I call like my girlfriend and I kind of came up with this thing where Saturdays are like our inner child days. <laughs> So we do things that nurture our inner child. Like last week, what did we do last week? We went shopping last week. Um, but I did something really, really fun. And I can't think about what I did, but it was like super childish. It was super fun. But that's what I do. Um, and for me, I feel like self-love has definitely been a journey. And... I always wonder why it was so uh, challenging to have self-love, but this is going to be, I don't know, just going to shake a lot of people up because this is just something that I noticed, <laughs> and it's the truth. Um, we were literally taught to hate ourselves, like we weren't even taught self-love, if that makes sense, like we were like, me, I like for as a kid, I was punished for loving myself, if that makes sense. Like from my mom, sister, just like, why are you like that? Like you think you're better than everybody, like you cocky, you kind of send in. And I'm like, because I like to speak highly of myself and do things that I enjoy. And even though that doesn't pertain to you, why is that a problem? And in our community, we are taught that a lot, which is why nowadays people really believe that self-love is a vain type of thing. Like everything you just said, the woman get the facials and the nails and the hair and the, 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 the Gucci bags because they consider that self-love. But self-love is truly an internal thing. You can have all the bags in the world and still hate yourself, which is why all of these women go through these type of things with men in the society and being stepped on and taken advantage of and cheated on and all of these things numerous times because they lack that self-love. Don't let the Gucci bags and shit fool you, bitch. 
Like, seriously. And it's really a sad thing because what Kanye said was so true. They made us hate ourselves and love their wealth. That's why Shorty's Holland, what a ball is that? Because everybody, even with the Kevin Samuels thing, everybody wants a high value man because nobody is loving themselves enough to be with just, I, I'm, the, I'm not, cause I don't wanna, I need to be extremely careful how I word this because all of our men, especially our black men are of high value. It don't matter what the fuck you got in your pocket. You understand what I'm saying? So, but everybody is searching for that. Oh, I'm trying to be taken care of. I need a, I need a baller. I need this, I need that. I need, why? If you love yourself enough, all the things that you think you're about to get from him, you can give to yourself. And he's just going to be in addition to that. Actual. Mm. That's good right there. And that's real. Um, what I can say is, uh, even Kendrick said it in one of his most recent songs. It was like, I know a lot of millionaires that's going through depression. Like, money won't save you. <laughs> it won't save you. Um, I mean, granted, if you're looking for problems to be solved uh, that are monetary in nature, like bills, um, you know, you need money to, you know, practice might be college, car, so, you know, little stuff like that. Understandable, you know, as a tool, it's going to do its service, but in the grand scheme of things, if we're looking, if we're talking about happiness, money can't buy. Um, health, money can't buy health. Money can't buy freedom. Money can't buy love. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, there's just so many things that really will fulfill somebody in their lives, a human being. Money can't really do any of those things. Um, the most that you could do is you can get an approximation. You want an approximation of love, you go to the club, <laughs> you know, flash the money around. You're going to get, you're going to get something, you know, but it might not be the type of love you really look for. Um, you'd be able to buy and afford the best doctors you can, but if you're not really taking care of yourself, putting the right things in your body, those doctors can't save you. You just paid them extra, you know, for them to just tell you the same thing that anyone else would have told you. Um, Freedom, you know what I'm saying? People spend millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars to try to create a lifestyle for themselves so that they can have freedom, but they just end up getting stuck in the loop and then they can't get out of it. Um, it's just a lot. Now with me, when it comes to self-care, I'm not gonna lie, as a man, it's really tough. And this is why I'm gonna say it's really tough as a man to find avenues of self-care because most men, especially men that I know that I grew up around, me myself, like we weren't raised with self-care as something that we should do, you know? Not our job is to, yeah, our job is to be um, a provider, um, strong, not really complain about anything, you know, wipe the dirt off your knees, son, get back up, keep on fighting, you know. There isn't really a lot of, uh, it's okay to cry on my shoulder type of things. And um, you can come express your feelings to me, young man. There's none of that. So as you get older, like, and you start catching yourself in a lot of different feelings, emotions, you try to explain yourself, it's tough. It's not easy. It usually comes out real jumbled. Uh, comes out with a lot of emotions that actually is coming from past trauma. It's not even really everything that's recent. Uh, that's everything jumbled in one. You know, there's no release. Um, so I feel like even for myself, I do fit into the category of trying to find what exactly, you know, what avenue I need to take. You know, where can I go? What can I do to actually 
have those things within me that I can, you know, unwind, release, just to feel better at the end of the day uh, for myself, you know, just to be able to even be happy around others, family members, uh, things like that, you know, instead of always having to be the shield, you know, actually being able to kick my feet back mentally and just go, ah, I got, I got, I got something to lean back on, you know, just relax. Yeah, tough. Uh, do you have any suggestions? Um, I do. I do have suggestions because I feel like we're all fighting the same battle. And I don't, I don't like, I'm not going to say I don't think it is more difficult for a woman or more difficult for a man. I really do just feel like it's a tumultuous warfare going on against all of us, especially people of our descent. Because a lot of people don't know we suffer the most because this shit is our fault. <laughs> and that's a hard pill to swallow. It's our fault. So in order to change something that we created, we gotta learn the power within. You already said it. You said I'm look. I, I was the things that are already inside of me. I'm looking to release. You're not looking to release. You're looking to unlock what you know is already inside of you. God is inside of us, and that's the one thing that they don't want us to know, which is why they kill us. Which is why they they do so many things to us because of the power that we possess. Which is why they taught us to hate ourselves from birth. Could you imagine how different the world would be if black people love them fucking selves? Can you imagine? I can. That's why I'm here with you doing my part of this mission because I'm gonna see it. I keep telling everybody that I'm gonna see it. I don't know what y'all gonna see, but I'm gonna see that shit. <laughs> I'm gonna be surrounded by nothing but black excellence because I already know the power that we possess. And as far as the tools, you gotta meditate. You gotta get uncomfortable. And I think that's one thing that black men really have a hard time with is getting uncomfortable because y'all are already so uncomfortable, but you gotta get uncomfortable in the right ways. Like I'm talking about the mother, like I, it's this one guy, I fuck with him so heavy because I've been seeing him just meditating in the park and shit like that. Black man, just meditating in the park. Like he not on the corner, he not drinking, he not like that shit. Like I don't think people understand how deep that shit is. Like meditating. You got to meditate because I get you closer to the source. You get off at six something in the morning. You need to be sitting outside under that sun watching it come up because the sun regenerates us. That's why they try to keep us in projects and hoods and in jail with no windows. You see how much sun? I don't got no lights on, y'all. This is the fucking sun. So if it can light up a space, what do you think it can do in on the inside of you? We're going to uh, do this yeah, open in that, real Go ahead, time. open that curtain up, yep. <laughs> We're going to do this in real time. <laughs> hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys. I'm with you guys, see? I, I Practice what you preach is real. I'm going to, you know, it is. real time. Watch me. Hold I on open my curtains every day because we'll find ourselves sitting in the dark. Got this right. thing closed real tight. You see this? How hard it is to do this because it's always dark. Yeah, it's always it's always dark. Get bring some light in there. Lighten it up. <laughs> oh. It brightened up the whole scene. Blinding. Right, like that's the healing power of the sun. It it literally complements us and it burns them. I should tell y'all something. That means that we need to be in it more. Sun gazing every morning, even if you in the hood, I ain't trying to hear no fucking excuses. The sun rises everywhere and everybody got windows. Open that motherfucker up. You can't go outside, stand by your window and open it up. You can't go up the porch, stand by the front door and leave it open. 
make sure your door closed because you know black moms don't play that. Don't be having her air running out the house. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Don't do that. Don't close that door. Hey. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Y'all already know how they be. But let it out. Those are the, the, the three things. And I give it to everybody. You got to get in the sun. You got to meditate and you got to journal because what the journaling does is it releases all the things like you just said. And it's so funny because I be going with, through this with my boyfriend all the time. Like it irritates the fuck out of me. When I tell you it irritates me to where I'm like, yo, I, will, I want to leave you because of this. <laughs> but I can't because it's a problem. And most Black men, they carry the trauma of the shit that they've been through. And, and instead of really really working to release it's like no no this is a part of my story this is a part of my villain story this is the okay well go ahead and be a villain then. go ahead and feel like the world doesn't love you go ahead and feel like y'all don't have safe spaces go ahead and continue to have that narrative for yourself because that's what the fuck y'all gonna keep getting until y'all start changing that narrative in your own lives nothing's gonna change because I see prestigious black men on my TV sharing, being born, like all of those things because they change that narrative in their mind. A lot of y'all not changing that narrative in y'all mind and that goes for black men and black women, but not more so for black men because black women, we've, we created safe spaces for ourselves. You understand what I'm saying? And again, it comes back to this, 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 this self-love thing. The self-love thing, like you gotta, I would just say pour more into yourself those three ways. Just start with that and let me know how your week go. Because I can go on and on about the tips and the tricks and the prayers and the God within and all those type of things. Because it's not something that you got to find. It's already within you. It's something you got to unlock. And that's really what I want y'all to keep in mind. Don't search for it outside of yourself because it's all within. Like, it really is all within. Self-love is within. Money is a tool. Once you get money, it's going to amplify who you already are. So if you already feel like depressed, unworthy, all of these type of things, what you think a hundred bands going to give you? You're going to be crying in a mansion. That's why I be laughing when people would like, you want to cry in a Toyota or you want to cry in the bins. Either way, you're going to be fucking crying because you're not loving yourself enough to know that this motherfucker ain't shit and you deserve better. You shouldn't have to cry in the bins, baby girl. Why are you not rejoicing in those blessings that God has presented to you? Why do you feel as though you need to cry in a bins? Why do you feel like that's your only option? Hey, she preaching today, man. Oh, wow. Because this self-love shit is real for me, yo. Like, I don't think y'all understood, like, even in my own household, how my mother, my own mother tried to beat the sh that shit out of me. And not physically, but with her words, she tried to cut me each and every way. Even before I left her house, she told me I'd be back. And that was a month ago. My own fucking mother. And I say that to say, because my mom is not the only one. A lot of y'all listen to your parents because that's what we were taught. Honor thy mother and thy father. That's what God said, honor them. That doesn't mean you need to be enslaved to their word. That doesn't mean you need to be a slave into their home. That doesn't mean you need to be enslaved to their bullshit. Because they're not God. They were a vessel to get you here. Yes, honor them, respect that. But don't live your life based off of what they got to say about your shit. Because they live there, John. It's your turn now. So what are you going to do with it? And I chose to not accept those contracts. And if I would have chosen to accept those contracts, I wouldn't be on here with you talking this shit. I wouldn't be on Instagram popping that shit. I wouldn't have the confidence enough of myself to even move to another country to start a new life for me and the family that I'm creating. You know where that comes from? This comes from self-love. From self-love, I love myself enough. My man literally is in a whole nother country. He's back in the, in the States. But guess what? I'm like, you know what? A lot of people love other people more than they love themselves. A lot of people in this position would have stayed, would have stayed 
for the boyfriend, would have stayed for the family, would have stayed because it's something that they used to. Brooklyn said, nah, I love me, it's you. I want different. So I got different. I got different. I got different because I wanted different. I love myself enough to know that I was deserving and worthy of that. Until you feel like that about you, you're going to keep getting the same shit. People going to continue to shit on you. It don't matter if you're a black man or a black fucking woman. And nobody's going to love you like you. So don't look for that. Don't look for that in your mother. Don't look for that in a fucking dog or a cat. Don't look for that in a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a wife. Don't look for that in nobody but you, bro. Nobody, only you and God got, got to figure that out. Anybody else is in the way. I'm speechless. I mean, the words are so, they're so real. It's like, you can't, you can't even help but like accept like what it is. Like, it's just so factual. We spend so much time in life just really thinking, you know, like, at least for me, like, you, know, you go through your emotions or like, where I want to be in life, what I want to do, you know, like, usually you got the, the standard, which is go to school, uh, you're going to go to college, get that career, at that career, you get yourself a girl, you know, you get your wife, and you have those kids, and you get that house, and that white picket fence. You, know, you got your, your son, your daughter, you got that car or two cars on the car notes. You got the cat, you got the dog, you got that college fund. You can kids, kids through that school, you work 60 hours a week or more, pay those bills, pay back that school debt, put them through school. Hopefully they take care of you when you get older. You finally put up that house, 401k, you cash it in. You click coupons, you take a little money from the 401k with the coupons and you combine it together and now you can survive for another 20 years after you're tired, now you're 80. And now it's like, hmm. Do you hear how dumb that sounds? <laughs> you work your whole life. Mind you, we up every day getting it boom, 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 boom. Your best years is when you're young. So now, what, what age do we retire? Like 60, 65? You said 401k, coupon yeah. books. So now I'm old as shit. I don't work my whole life and I still got to use coupons to pay for my shit? After working my whole life? You got me fucked up. <laughs> and it bothers me that people fall for that dumb ass shit. That people have failed for that. People continue to do that. Like, seriously, do you hear how dumb that sounds? It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's insanity. Like, but it's like, crazy. man, the way that it's packaged, the way that it's packaged. They make it look good. Like, it, yeah, it's so easy to get lost. Like, you don't really even realize that's what's happening. Like, you don't realize it at all. It just feel like, it just feel like a way of life almost. But <laughs> whose way of life? life. Right, because nobody's asking those questions. Yeah. Who's way yeah. of <laughs> That's the thing. You go about it and you, you just don't ask the question. You just do it. You just go. You're like, this is how it's supposed to be, so I'm just going to fall right in line. Just do it. Yeah. Um, I feel like the strength inside of you is them times where you sit back and it's like, I don't want to do this. Or you go, damn, like, I want to be able to, like, not go to work. You know, if you can catch, everybody has those moments in life. I feel like everybody has it because it's inside of you. Like, it's just, can you catch it? Like, can you catch it and hold on to it and really just kind of let it, let that fester? Like, what do you really want to do? Do you, why do you not like this? Like, what do you really want to actually experience in life? You know, like with me, I'm not going to lie. Ever since I was a kid, I had a saying that I always used to say. 
and it's real funny thinking about it. It's like the saying I always used to say is, I want to live my life. <laughs> and like, that is so powerful. It's like, I want to live my life. What did that mean to me as a kid? I want to do whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it, however I want to do it. And that's it. Simple. I don't want no constraints. I don't want nobody telling me what to do. I don't want nobody, you know, making me get up this time. I don't want none of that. I want, if I think about doing something, I'm going to go do it. If I want to get something, I'm going to go get it. No constraints. And when you spend so much time really thinking about this and you talk to a lot of people, you hear a lot of stories, you realize like, that's what everybody really wants. The American dream or the dream of people in general, but specifically, like if you're talking about the American dream where you got the, the home, the family, the car, the wife, the friends, the dog and all that, what it really is is you want freedom. Like you want to be able to get up, make your own schedule, do your own thing, have your own time, move how you want to move without the constraints. Yeah, that sounds like Marquis' dream. That don't sound like the American dream. So that goes back to whose dream is that? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And a lot of people don't look at it like that. That's the American dream. That's the American dream. Okay, so that means America created this dream for itself. Typically the white eye, the white, uh, white skin, blue eye, however you call them. The American dream. We don't talk about Brooklyn's dream. We don't talk about Barclay's dream. We don't talk about Sasha's dream or whoever's dream. The American dream. So when people kind of like, and it, <laughs> it's crazy because the shit is so simple, it go right over your head. That's how they get you. Everything is simplistic. When they try to, <laughs> And I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret. Wall Street <laughs> is easy as fuck. The only reason that people stay away from it is because they try to throw a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo, make it seem like it's complicated. So that way people can be like, oh no, I don't, I wanna stay away from that. But the things that are so easy for people, are the most fucking detrimental to them. The welfare. Mm. The jobs. Mm. And those are just some of the few. I'm going to just leave it right there because I can go on and it'll be a whole nother. Because it's in me. Like I was fine. I'm yo. Like when I tell you the downloads have been so crazy, like God was like, nah, like, let me just move you on over here so you can fully hear me. I literally was listening to, what's her name? Sarah, Sarah Jacobs or some shit like that. T.D. Jake's daughter, I love her. Love, love, love her. And she said, God will literally move you away from the people who try to keep, basically like try to keep like the word out of you like he'll move you away from the people that are trying to keep that that righteousness out of you which is why i know i had to get the fuck out of my mom's house love her to death but for somebody to speak negatively negativity over you you already know where their mind is at and that's not what god you know where their heart is at and that's not what god they are of this world people who are of this world are not of god i want y'all to hear that people who are of this world are not of god and I'm not saying that to say that you can't have nice things, material possess. I'm not saying none of that. But the people who get it, get it. The people who are of this world are not of God, period. Because people who are of God understand that this is just a, a, a spiritual being having a human experience, which is why I don't take none of this shit to, to surface level. Because it's not, it's literally a puzzle. And like I said, the shit can easily go over your head with the American dream. That's, that's not Marquis' dream. So why are you living it? 
why? Have you ever even thought to ask yourself that question? No, because we're not taught to for cognitive thinking. We taught to just take a ticket and get the fuck in a line, like the rest of the robots in the world. You ever see those memes where it's like you got the line and the line is supposed to say like it's supposed to be like representing life and you got all the different people in that line mm -hmm. and then you got like you can see all the things around that line you got like basically it's life and then at the end of the line F, you got work over here you got a line for that but all the lines are intertwining and then you got just one person that literally is stepped out the line. Went the other running. way. Yeah, yeah they're running the other way. But then they got surveillance cameras on them, got them pointed at them. They trying to get them because he 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 off of that train. He's like, mm -hmm. no, I'm out of here. I'm I'm gone. Like y'all not catching me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm not gonna lie. Like I feel like that's me. Well, that was me. Like a few years ago, I I stepped out real quick and took a peek, and I was like, oh. Oh, that's what they're doing over there. Yeah. Yo, hey, hey, man, hold my spot. Oh, where do you think you're going, man? You can't do that. <laughs> I'm out of here. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like I dipped off. <laughs> I dipped off. And it's kind of, and now it's to the point where it's just like, you notice so much when you're watching everybody else kind of just do what they do you just notice this is on a different level and then you realize like i was there that was me i am i was that it's just the craziest feeling one thing i can say is we'll probably touch on something like that on another episode but regret Regret. It's a word that always it always this is a word that always sticks in my head. Like how long until you realize and feel regret? Like you don't want to wait too long. You want to try to catch it as early as possible. Mm -hmm. So you can start changing some things. Um, because I just did see a video about the top five things that you know older people, people in nursing home, people, what they say that they regret. Um just a few of the things off the top of my head that I can remember out of the five was um, one of the main ones was they regret not keeping relationships with friends because they were so into the grind, being busy, work, 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 work. A lot of golden relationships that they had fell off. They wish they would have kept those. Another one is um, being able to express their feelings. A big regret they didn't get the chance to express their feelings and really i guess be themselves you know within another one that i can remember is um they didn't do what they wanted to do all of those sound like self-love problems yeah they did something else you know mm -hmm. uh, the perfect example you you always hear it Hey, uh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a uh, I'm a designer at uh, at the services facility over here for this for this company right here, this Fortune 500 company. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, what, what you went to school for that? Oh no. Oh, what you go to school for? I went to school for archaeology. Ar Ar archaeology, and you're doing design at oh so. What happened there? Like, oh, not a lot of jobs for archaeology. So I just, I wanted to do it. I loved it, but I had to just get whatever was out there. Can't find a job for it. Mm. And I'm not going to lie, in my life, I've, I've met hundreds of people with that. Like, it's rare that somebody that I know is doing what they went to school for. I, I don't even know what exactly that is. Maybe you could shed light on it, but I just realized that like there might be only one to two people I've met in my life that they went to college for something and that's what they're doing. Like it's not like that. Why is that? 
What is that about? Um, honestly, it, and I can, I can speak on it, but I can't because I personally, like, well, let me just tell you about my experience. I, I will speak on it. Most of the time, like, I want y'all to understand that high school was just created maybe in the, I think, I want to say the 1920s, maybe the 30s high school and that maybe the 60s I don't know it's, it was somewhere in that range but high school is a very recent thing the only reason that they created high schools was because once the kids got out of grade school it, they had nothing to do so could you imagine neighborhoods and neighborhoods being filled with kids especially young men because of, of course like y'all you know the workers in the society essentially y'all all y'all are our shields in a sense, y'all do provide and protect us, but that doesn't mean that you can't love yourself in the process of doing that. So don't, don't even, don't even try to take that idea and run with it. Nobody, okay? <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but they created the high school just to kind of give the kids something to do. Now, in college, I, I won't say that is the same thing, but essentially. I feel like it's kind of the same thing. It's an institution to where they can get your money, keep you busy for another four years of your life and prepare you to work for them for the rest of your life. And you gotta think if people were like the archeologists, because the archeologists is like the people who find fossils and do all of those type of things, right? Isn't yeah, that they discover, yeah, they discover, uh you know, ancient bones. Artifacts, and, and yeah. They, they did get artifacts. And, yeah. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So again, the system is designed to keep you a slave mentally, spiritually, and physically. Like, I'm not going to talk about it on here because I know the video will get flagged, but on the Patreon, we're literally going to talk about reincarnation, the reason that we're here, all of that type of things, and how they've been feeding off of us for years and all of the systems that are set in place. Like, if you ever run a bit, like people, all of my entrepreneurs, y'all gonna feel me on this one because you know the business only runs when it's automated. Y'all know how hard it is to run a business that's not automated. So you don't think that they will put automations in place for them, for their slaves, i.e. us, the colleges, the grade schools, the jobs, the labor workers, all of those things. They're not gonna allow you to go to school for archeology span and then have a, 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 a archeology span job readily available for graduate students making so much money or discovering all of these things because then guess what? You're no longer a slave, you're a free thinker. You're an archeologist, you're someone who can discover things that they cannot. Why would they want that? So guess what? It's not that they don't have archaeology jobs or archaeology jobs, they do, but they're going to give them jobs to the people that they want to give them to, those people that are helping them run their automation system. The same thing with international business, the same thing with tech, the same thing with all these different things. So college for me was more so still an indoctrinating system. Because guess all the things, it, it, even the most prestigious people who have to go to college, doctors, lawyers, guess who the fuck you working for? Them. In their hospitals, in their courts, in their facilities. And the people that don't are the people that win, i.e. most of the time business owners. And guess what? Almost all business majors drop the fuck out. I.E. me, I did one, <laughs> I.E. Kanye West. Kanye didn't finish school, college dropout, bro. Cause he knew the shit was bullshit. I knew the shit was bullshit. I got in school and I was teaching myself biology. I was teaching myself Spanish. And I was just talking to my boyfriend about it. He, cause he's thinking about going back, actually he is going back to school for his engineering degree. But he's in tech, he's been in tech. Mind you, black man taught himself all of this shit. 
he's sitting there going through the curriculum. He like, damn, BB, that's what you call me. He's like, damn, BB, like, I'm not going to really get to the stuff that I don't know until my third year. So the first two years that he's in college, he's literally just wasting his fucking life, taking a whole bunch of classes that they want him to take. Filling up his time, keeping him busy. It's the same thing. So that's how I look at college. College is literally just another one of their automated indoctrinated systems for us, which is why I had to get the fuck out. Because guess what? Then we didn't even tie in the financial aspect of it. <laughs> You're bound to them for oh. life. You're bound to them for life, bro. Oh, and then, oh, and then here's here's some information right here, which I found out is a hundred percent facts. Like you can actually go look it up. If you default on your student loans through means of being deceased. It gets passed on to your children. And I was done. I'm like, huh? I'm like, I thought if you're not there, you is gone. Like, how are you going to pay for it? It's in your name. Oh, no. They go, oh, your name's still alive <laughs> because you left, you left some people here your creations and they're gonna pay like it's so crazy they want like, to make sure they get theirs it's so crazy to me and then on top of that i mean the it, it all depends on the type of debt but when we're talking those large scale debts for these large scale situations you could look at it like oh it is what it is just do it because nah man i mean you go to you go to you go to medical school you know, you're most likely going to have at least 250 grand backed up. You're going to go out there, you know, probably going to get a position, making a cool 90K, might get a $2,000 bonus. I mean, that 90K, you got to split that up between time. It's not like you get paid 90K in one go. Like, this is coming in increments, and you got bills. I mean, who knows if you have kids at that point? Uh, Look at this, because I, ever since my my me and uh, my boyfriend Ben, he got me like do the numbers. So ninety k, ninety k. Yeah, you have to calculate. Right. Yep. Divided by <laughs> twelve, it's seven thousand five hundred dollars a month. Which is nothing to sneeze at. Mm -hmm. Solid. Most Great. of the time. <laughs> people with this type of money feel like they got to keep up with the Joneses or have a certain lifestyle that matches their career. So they mm -hmm. get a nice house, condos, lofts, whatever. The average medium rent right now for a one bedroom is 2000. So okay. for some nice shit, you're going to be paying about 29, almost three. So let's do three. So 7,500 minus 3000, 4,500. You gotta feed yourself. You're gonna take away at least five for that. Then you got bills. We're gonna take away, how much we're gonna take away for bills? Cause bills add up. We're gonna give bills another like 2,000, right? Mm -hmm. Does that include the, that, that include the car? Oh shit, does it include the car? No. Because That's how much is the car gonna be? What is, what's, what's, the, what's the car note? What's the average car note? Like 300, 300? Yeah. If they have an average car. If they have an average car. And then what else you got expenses? Did I did we calculate food? No. Yep. We, didn't. we didn't. That we didn't. Yeah, we have to they, yeah, they had to see so you took out five. Yeah, you took five hundred for that. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah, five hundred for food. What else do we gotta pay for? Insurance for cars? Yep. Another three hundred. I leave you, and I think I'm still missing some bills, but that leaves you with fourteen hundred dollars a month. Oh, I don't even think you took taxes out for that. I didn't take taxes. You are absolute. So let me take away this four hundred. That's a stack. So you literally left with a stack a month. Now, mind you, I worked for student loan department before, and the doctors and the lawyers and the motherfuckers who got that two hundred and fifty k number that you're talking about, their payments bro was seven hundred dollars a month. 
I've hmm. seen nothing less than $500 for a fucking student loan payment for a loan that's that high. So let's do that. Minus another, another five, we're going to say 550. And that leaves you with $450 a month. $450. Let's divide that by four, because that's a week. <laughs> you got $100 to your name a week. Mind you, if this is a male that we're talking about, you still have family. family. Your girlfriend, Average median I income. need my nails done. <laughs> Shoot. <Yeah. laughs> Average median income for a male is like, what is it, 28 to 30K? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about somebody who would be considered, you know, uh, I guess you would say, what is that, what is that ratio that they would put them at? High, high middle class, mm -hmm. I guess. I mean, high middle class is still going through the same struggles because of the means at which that they're living their lives. Let's just imagine that this person decided to go, I'm gonna live as if I was making 30, 35, something like that, like everybody else. Now you could do so much more. You're not worried about getting some nice fancy fancy that's like three stacks. You're gonna make sure you can get something that's probably like a stack. You know what I'm saying? Um, keep the average car going, food, that's fine. Um, student loans are always gonna come out. Bills are gonna move how they move. car insurance, everything's still pretty much the same. Um, you do, you have to make a substantial cut to even get a nice little portion back, you know? You gotta change your entire lifestyle. Yeah. Like you, again, you work all like, and it's nothing wrong with it, this is where they, they sell you on the lies because who wouldn't want to get a nice car and a nice crib after busting your ass for four years? Most of the time it's eight years for lawyers and doctors and stuff like that. So you want to reap the rewards, the benefits, you know what I mean? It's like, I want to feel good about this. I don't want to live in a one bedroom to where I'm paying a thousand dollars a month and it's raggedy. You know what I mean? Like people want the, they, you feel me to fit what they feel that they are on the inside, but that's where the lies come in, man. Like being rich is, it's a mindset. Is really a mindset. It has nothing to do with currency. It has nothing to do with currency, like nothing. And it's so funny. I met this 18 year old girl. She owns her own business and her parents, they do real estate. They brought her a home, which she lives in while she attends college. So she got a credit and a business at the age of 18. And she understands that. Like I am rich. She reminds you, she got a whole bunch of European friends who like to travel, boom, 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 but guess what they using? They're not using cash, they using credit. So are you really rich? If you using credit everywhere and got loans and debts and all of the, these type of things, like, yeah, you swipe your card and you feel good in the moment, but when you get home, you're going to be, uh, that credit card statement coming at the end of the month, I don't know. That's no way to live. That's part that nobody sees that side. Nobody, nobody sees, sees it. Scenes. But it exists, bro. <laughs> when I tell you it exists, it absolutely exists and almost at like, I ain't gonna say everybody, but a, a lot of people, a lot. That's why I'm like, don't, don't put nobody on no pedestal. Like, even if I'm your inspiration, don't even put me on no pedestal because none of us, like, it's a source that's, that's higher than all of us. And he just want us to get the, just the simple, <laughs> the simple things that has been going over our heads. Like, stop falling for the lies and really start like cognitively and spiritually using your own discernment. Like, I, I, that's what I want y'all to pray for this week. I want y'all to pray for discernment. I know we like to pray for riches and get us out of this situation and all of these things. Pray for discernment. Because once you're able to discern, it'll be a lot easier for you to see the, the, the real from the fake.
the friends from the fools. You understand what I'm saying? The things that you should engage with and the things you shouldn't, the light and the darkness. God and, and, and the negative entities and deities and things like that. Like the sermon will really help you with that. Now be careful when you ask for it, because like I said, for me, even once I asked for it, I seen it in my own mother that she wasn't for me, that she may not be going to where I got going next for my own family, which is fine for me. I'm strong enough to accept that, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit here and tell y'all right now, some of the things that are going to come up about the people that are closest to you, once you start asking God for this discernment, it's going to fuck you up a little bit. So I just want y'all to be mentally prepared, truly start working on that self-love, get a journal, because if you don't write it down, you might drive yourself nuts just thinking and thinking and thinking. And that's another thing that people don't even realize about this world right here. This is a world of consciousness. <laughs> this is a world of consciousness. Do I want to go into that? Let me not. Let me not. Let me not. Because we'll be here for you. Yo, let me not. Let me not. Let me not. Because that's a whole other lesson now to just have everybody like, what? We'll talk about that next time. <laughs> Hey, this one meant a lot to me because um, I do love myself, but I feel like I don't love myself enough. And that's why, you know, if you guys don't know, like, to be fair, I, I am a co-host here, you know. Um, I do, I do input a lot of, I do talk about a lot of, a lot of things that, you know, I know, but you got to understand something like Miss Spirits is actually like, really like my mentor, like she's like a teacher. So I'm learning just like y'all. So I'm taking valuable lessons and putting my notes down as well, even as I'm here with you guys, you know, we're all learning, we're all experiencing. I am not you know, exempt from any of this. So I learned a lot. Um, and in real time, you know, we're going to put these things in practice, put these things in use. So, I, you know, we all can grow. I mean, even Miss Spears herself, like she was mentioning this to me, like, and it really hit home when you realize, like, you guys have been watching the videos, you guys have noticed, like, you see where she's sitting right now. You see the difference. You see where it was before, where she was in a room. You in know? a basement at my mom crib, bro. Fuck her room. I had to make my own space. <laughs> <laughs> hey, little brother's coming down, laundry room right there, nigga. No privacy. <laughs> I made it look good. But no privacy. I want y'all to know I was in an air mattress in my mom's basement, bro. People running up and down the steps. Fucking, yo, no bullshit. Like, I really made that shit look good. But that was a lot. <laughs> that was not a room. <laughs> See? That's A. She did make it look good. I had no idea. I'm over there. Nice spot. Nice spot. Nice spot. Did good. Thank you. But yeah, and just look at it now, uh, just a whole leapfrog step. Now she's out here in a whole nother country just setting the tone. And when I tell you like inside of me, it's just so much motivation. Like That's all it really does for me. Like, motivation, motivation, motivation. I look at that and I just go, I can do that. I got to get it. How do I get it? What do I gotta do? Where do I go? How do I move? That's all it is for me. Like, you can't, I don't even understand how you can even hate when somebody is doing great. Like, if you ever wanted to be great and somebody you know is doing great, if anything, you ask them, what was that like? Like, how'd you do it? That's it. You shouldn't be mad. Like, you shouldn't ever be in a space where you're like, dang, like, you just gonna go and just leave? Or like, man, man, you out there, man. 
and it ain't really all that going out there. They they're not really doing all that out there. It's a bunch of criminals and all there out there in them other countries. We here in America, we good, we good. What, bro? What are you talking about? Like you struggling just like the next man. You don't even know where you're trying to go. You trying to get out too. <laughs> you saying? <laughs> Believe it or not, but you just stuck. You saying? You mad that you stuck and somebody that you know in the same circumstances as you is able to make it out. You don't know what to do. So now you're just acting the fool. That's all it is. Can't let yourself get stuck in that mindset. And when it comes to self-love, if you love yourself enough, you're going to do what it takes to make sure that you're good. That's facts. And sitting here in, in real time with you guys, just realizing like, yeah, it's a journey. And it does start with yourself, you know, looking inside yourself and really asking yourself the questions like, what do I want? Where do I see myself? You know, what is out here for me? And what have I always wanted to do? And then you write it down and you go do it. You chase it. Yeah, you got to write it down. Oh, that's another. Well, I'll give you all that, too, because that's something that got me here. Um, I would always I, I think I'm going to do a little I might do a segment like a TikTok or something to talk about the power of the blue ink pen. I don't write in nothing but blue like um, but I had a gold card. And my gold card was actually I think I took a picture of it. I think I needed like three thousand dollars. On my goal card, I was like, I need $3,000. I want to move back to Mexico and I want to fix my credit. And I'll show y'all, because I took a picture of it. I threw the gold card away because it's time for another one. Yep, here it go, right here. Oh, you probably can't see it because of the uh, the words and shit like that. But this is a gold card and it got all the stuff on it. Let me see if I turn my, my brightness down. You can oh, yeah, use it a little bit. Words. Yeah. See that right there? Yep. Yep. That's the gold card. And I would read it every day. And like I said, it only took me about two, two and a half months to get here from reading this every day and believing it and just seeing it. And so what'll start to happen is what'll start to happen is because again, God is a source that is within us. And it's important to pray for discernment because the same way that you hear good things, you also hear bad things in your mind as well. So with the goal card, you start reading it, you start feeling it, you start embodying it. What will happen is you'll start to receive downloads from God or from your, your higher self of the things that are going to get you there, the things that you need to do whether it be meditation, whether it be prayer, whether like for me, God was like, you need to get outside more because I was in a basement. That's why I was like, no, open them blinds up. We so used to being in the dark. We like, I, like I, I look completely different. Like if you go back and look at them videos to what I look like now, like you can see the life in me. Like skin glowing, just everything. But when I was home, I didn't have that same glow because I was in the dark. I was keeping myself in the dark. So when I started reading my gold card, God was like, anytime you get a chance, like on your lunch breaks, I want you to go for a walk if it's not raining outside. So my lunch breaks, at the time it was an hour, I would go out and I would take a walk. And with the movement, I would just continue to get down those, continue to get down those, just walk, 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 walk conversations, you know, with like the, just the different things that I needed to do for myself. But that's what's going to start happening. Like once you really start tapping in, God is going to speak to you a little bit different. He's going to give you those different ways that you need to love yourself more and, and others around you in your foundation and in your community. And it's a powerful thing. Like I, I want y'all to know how powerful it is. Like that's the reason that I'm here because I know the power that resides in me. And I always knew that as a kid. And I'm like, if this isn't me, it got to be in other people. So that's my job is to make you realize that it's also in you and to help you pull that out of yourself. Because 
it's hard, especially in a world where they te- like the entire thing is set is like strategically designed to 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 fuck us up strategically. Like it's not just something that they came up with. Like these motherfuckers strategically. So in order to counteract that, we have to be strategic about how we move. We can't just continue to go in with the oh da 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 blah 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 da the way that they that 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 they perceived us to be, the way that they taught us to be. We can't do that because again. Who, who, whose reality is that? Is that their reality that they want for us or is that the reality that we want for ourselves? Are we living Marquis' dream or are we living the American dream? Are we living Brooklyn's dream or are we living the American dream? Are we of the world or are we of God? I really want y'all to start asking yourselves these questions because these are real questions that need real answers in real time. So that's facts. Yeah, I'm gonna just leave it. I'm gonna just, <laughs> just leave it there. But do the gold Ooh. card. Write down three things that you want, even if they don't seem tangible. Cause I know how the fuck I was about to get 3K. I just had started, I was unemployed. Trading was going bad for your girl. I mean, like just was not hitting because I wasn't in the right mental space. I just wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't had like I wasn't. I wasn't. But I got all that shit because I believed it. Even though I didn't see it, I'm like, shit. I got that fucking 3K two days before I hopped on my flight. Two days, bro. But guess what? I got it. <laughs> and I'm here. So it's like. Like nothing, nothing is out of reach, if that makes sense. Like everything we want is already all of us. You just gotta believe that you're deserving of it. So write it down, see yourself in it. That's the that's the power of the gold card. Cause you when you read something, it's like you you ever like that's why I like reading books. I'm not a TV person, I'm a book reader. I've always been, I always will be, because when you read books. There's no pictures. So your mind is automatically in imagination mode. You gotta create what you think that the author is talking about. You know, you notice that? Like when you read, it's like, oh, okay. And my narration might be different from your narration. Your narration might be different from mine or illustration, I should say, because it's in the the mind. So it's the image. (laughs) But it's being, it's it's working. That's what they try to take out. And I'm gonna just drop this one little gem. That's the reason that they took arts and shit out of schools. I want y'all to know that. That was a part of the budget cut because you can't have creative people, creative thinkers that does something to your mind, something great to your mind. You notice that, that they took out school or they took out arts and all of those things and music. Yeah, nah. arts and craft, music. Yep, because sound therapy is healing. Arts and color <laughs> therapy is healing. And that's all, that's the whole matter. Let me, all right, we got in this joint because I'm gonna keep going off, y'all. I'm gonna keep going off <laughs> and dropping all of these gems, like because crazy gems. Crazy gems. That's why I'm like, I can't have this shit on YouTube. Like, nah, my people gonna get this. Like, my people gonna get this. So, um, we gonna end it here. <laughs> We go into here for I continue to go off, but do the gold card and just watch how your life will change in just a matter of a few weeks, a matter of a few months. Um, write in blue ink and only do about two to three things. Like you don't want to overwhelm yourself, especially if you're not used to tapping into that imagination. Like me, I like I visualize. Like I can say that my visualization is impeccable. If you need help working on your visualization, I'm gonna put a link in the description box below for creative visualization. It's some exercises in there. It's a book, it's a really short book, like less than hundred pages that you can read. Um, and it's only like 10 bucks or something. All the books that I'm giving you, like literally my favorite quote is, if you want to hide something from men, put it in a book because motherfuckers don't read. People are really stupid. 
That's crazy. That's like, if I'm crazy, y'all stupid. Stuff. Seriously. Like, if I'm crazy, y'all stupid. Like, seriously. Because all the books that I gave y'all or am giving y'all is not even a dub, bro. Not even 15 bucks. We spend more on that on weed, cigarettes, and food. I know y'all had Chick-fil-A this week. If not, y'all gonna have Chick-fil-A this week or Burger King or McDonald's or whatever the case may be or Chipotle. Fucking love Chipotle. Shout out to Chipotle. Like, you feel me? But Chipotle, $15. I could have took that same $15 and got a book. I could have got three of them because it's three books that I gave y'all that was $5 a piece. No excuses. I'm not trying to hear no excuses. I'm not trying to hear that broke shit. I'm not trying to hear none of that shit. If y'all don't want it, it's because you don't want it. So just say that. Don't say because you don't got the finances or the funds or none of that dumb shit because black people got a $7.1 trillion buying power in the U.S. Y'all can kiss my ass with that bullshit. 7.1. And that includes the bitches on the welfare too because y'all kids stay with the Jordans and the newest shit on. So please, miss me with it. Oh, gosh. Oh, there's so much. I'm, I'm here That's again. I'm done. I'm done. I'm here again. <laughs> I'm here again. Y'all see me? I, I, I can't. I can't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing else left to say. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, for real. Like, it's just too much. <laughs> If y'all are like me right now, it's just like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> <laughs> we submit. Changes will be made. Promise. Yeah. After these conversations, <sighs> it's like your inside ain't even gonna rest well until you make those changes. And that's why I I'm know not resting right now. That's I was going. tired. I was really tired. And now I'm awake. My eyes are kind of just like this. Like, I don't know if y'all can see. They weren't doing this before. Before they were like this. <laughs> now I'm here. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to just go to sleep. Back to sleep. <laughs> it's like now I got all these. It's funny because when you tap into yourself, we're gonna end it after this. But when you tap into yourself, guys, you start to realize you start to think about how you got things to do and you don't got time to waste Bef exactly before those moments how is it you just moving with time it's like i'm gonna do this the i'm gonna do this later i'm gonna do this then i'm gonna do this this i'm gonna do this that because you feel as though it's unlimited like like it's nothing's gonna end like it's all just everything's just relative you know to you like yeah, I, I'm gonna do it later because I know I'm gonna be able to do it later. Like, you don't know. Yeah. You don't. That's the crazy thing about it. And it's like, once you realize that X, Y, and Z coming from yourself, you wanna do these things, how are you gonna do it? When are you gonna do it? Why you wanna do it? You start to think like, dang, I need time for this. How do I make time for that? How, how do I do that? Dang, I don't got no time. I gotta make time. Oh, dang, what? But I got, I got this that I gotta do with so-and-so. I gotta go here and I gotta go chill with him. I gotta go chill with, with Jim over here in a couple of days. I gotta go, go do this right here. I gotta go do that. You're going to start seeing what's for you and what's not. Discernment. Because we all got the same 24. Beyonce, Elon Musk, me, you, Oprah. So how were they able to get so much time out of the same time? The prioritizing of it. The discerning mm -hmm. of, what's, of what's deserving of your time. It's not like they got more. I mean, they, don't. they got more funds. Like, ain't like God, like, you know what, B? I'm about to give you an extra five hours. Here you go, sweetie. Like, no. <laughs> it don't work like that. <laughs> Oprah, you did real, real good on that last show that you put on that network. 
I'm gonna give you an extra, I'm gonna give you an extra 10. <laughs> so now, now you're working with 34. Right. There you go. Go crazy, go crazy. Nah, man. That's funny to even think about it. But seriously, because when you think about it like that, it's like, damn, we really do all got the same time. What am I doing like different? Like, what am I doing wrong? Like, what am I doing that's not conducive to where I want to go? And for me, like, I had to ask myself those questions. Like, what was you doing? Like, I noticed what I was doing. I'm like, damn, I'm really sitting here scrolling on Instagram or TikTok, just bullshit. Like, just allowing my mind to just wither. And I catch myself doing that sometimes, but that's when you got to start living intentional. Because once I started living intentional, shit started to change for me. And I'm telling y'all right now, I already told y'all uh, the, the, about a month ago that this was going to happen. And I'm telling y'all now what's coming next. I'm not going to be working on a job in the next month and a half. I, and I'm only giving myself a month and a half because I needed for a certain period of time to, to help with my residency for this new country. Um, but after that, no, 3K a week. 12k a month it's mine like i already see it i am making that i am making three thousand dollars a week twelve thousand dollars a month and you see how i said that not i want not i not i am <laughs> i am because that's the power of it you are whatever you say you are as a man think if so is he so if you say i am lazy then you are i am broke well don't expect money to come to you. <laughs> you feel me? Like, so whatever you put after I am, be mindful of that because that's exactly what you're going to bring into your existence. Um, it's powerful, but we'll get into that on the next consciousness, on a consciousness video. I think I want to talk about that next, talk about consciousness. But you know what? I think that'll be the first video that we do for the, for the Patreon because I don't want that on YouTube. Mm. Okay. Uh, oh, you heard it here. You heard it right here first. Once you guys step into that, once we step into that, um, that area, we start doing Patreons and we get off to YouTube. We get right down to the nitty gritty. So everybody that's been watching, you guys are awesome. You guys are great. Uh, it's levels. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time to it's time to hit the code breaker. Uh, what, what do they call it? Enter the matrix. <laughs> yeah. Facts. But I already told, because I think this is probably one of the longest ones that we had, honestly. This is probably like an hour and a half, no bullshit. This is a long podcast. And it's going to get like this, guys, because everything that was being bottled up is spilling really out. And <laughs> it cannot be held any longer. It's just spilling out. You see, we were we were supposed to we were supposed to hop off already. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like we keep talking, we keep thinking, and it's just like, oh, and in in other words, in oh, another way, <laughs> and another one. Furthermore, let's go, let's go. Yeah, we're hyped. We're here for y'all. Thanks. <laughs> we're here. But yeah, comment down below. Make sure you guys put those goals down on those cards, blue ink. Um, for the week, put your goals down and say them with the power of I am. Yes. For sure. And ask God for discernment. And we're going to yes. end it here, folks. Put, it, put our pieces up. You are ready? Yeah. <laughs> Until next time, gang. <laughs> <laughs>